Hello, welcome to episode 142 of A Stitch in Time. Today is Tuesday, May 26, 2020. I'm Carol, otherwise known as Knits and Pearls on Ravelry, and I am coming to you from my home in the Fraser Valley of British Columbia, Canada, not too far east of Vancouver. If this is your first time watching, a special hello and welcome to you. Thank you so much for checking out the podcast, and if you're a returning viewer, hello again. Welcome back. Thank you for coming by once more to spend some time with me as I chatter on mostly about my knitting. And I have a lot of that to talk about this week. Unlike last week, um, I had actually a couple of people very kindly uh, reach out and ask me if I was okay because I hadn't put a podcast up last week. I assure you I am well other than dealing with some seasonal allergies as the cottonwood fluff kind of flies through the air here right now. Um, no, I just, uh, last week I thought about recording and realized I had only two projects that I had worked on all week and there wasn't a lot going on. I didn't think it would make for a very interesting episode, so I decided to delay it a few days. Also, um, this way I'm kind of getting back on track to record a little bit earlier in the week. I had gotten in the habit of pushing it off until Thursday and Friday, and I really do prefer to record on Tuesdays or Wednesdays. Um, I'd actually have planned to record tomorrow, but um, just sort of on a whim decided to get all my things together and uh, at least record the episode this afternoon. It's already, I think, about 3.30. Yeah, it's 3.30 in the afternoon, but the sun's shining, so got decent lighting. And even if I don't get this out tonight, I can at least get a jump start on uh, on this episode by recording it today. Um, thanks to all of you who did reach out in one way or another uh, this past week and a half. Um, I always so appreciate hearing from you and being able to, you know, have a little conversation back and forth. So thanks so much for taking the time to reach out and say hello. It really does mean a lot to me. Another reminder, my notifications from YouTube have been hit or miss. I try and kind of check back every couple of days to the last two or three episodes to see if there's any, if there are any new comments up there. If I have um, missed a comment from an earlier episode or even a more recent one, I apologize. I just haven't seen it. I do try very hard to um, acknowledge all of them. Um, so, yes, I went on a little bit of a cast on spree late last week. Not just because I realized I didn't have a lot of knitting content to share, but because I um, have been kind of itching to cast on a few new things. So settle back, I think it might be a long one. Um, I don't hear it at the moment, but my neighbor has been cutting his grass. I've uh, shut a few doors, so to try and minimize the noise, but um, there are a few open windows, so um, I apologize if that sort of, uh, if you hear that in the background. It is this time of year after all when uh, everyone's trying to keep up with the yard work. We've kind of had a mixed bag of weather too. We'll have sunshine one day and then some clouds and or rain the next two or three. So everyone sort of has to get out and, and mow their lawn um, when the sun shines. So, Okay, so first things first, I finished a pair of socks. Um, they are my, what I've been calling my happy hour socks. Uh, just a plain pair of stockinette socks, 64 stitches, uh, top down, two by two rib, traditional heel flap and gusset, rounded toe. Um, they are knit from Fiber Nymph Dye Works, um, her bounce base in the It's Wine O'Clock Somewhere colorway. I've been calling these my happy hour socks. Um, cast them on one happy hour. I've worked on them over a number of happy hours. Not just happy hours. I don't think 
that much. <laughs> and I drink wine on uh, mostly, uh, that's usually my drink of choice. So it just uh, seemed like an appropriate name for them. So I'll bring them home. one up a little bit closer. So you can see, you can see it's a four stripe colorway. And as I said, pretty basic um, stock and net uh, plain vanilla sock. So um, always good to have um, a pair of those on hand to work on, you know, while you talk to other people or watch TV or, you know, whatever the case may be. So yeah, so they are done. Um, the other project that I worked on last week was my um, Walk Along by Anka Strick. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, looking to see where I put my stack of patterns. Here's a picture of it. It's a, um, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a fingering weight sweater. That's what I'm using. Um, fingering weight or sport. Yeah, fingering weight. Often they can be kind of interchanged. That's why I was questioning it. Um, I am knitting it from um, Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light. And I have two colorways. Um, here's the label. So I am knitting uh, the main color is uh, Night Bloom. And then the contrast is almost basically a black uh, called onyx. So I believe when I showed it to um, last week, I had um, had gotten part way, it's a top down raglan. I had done the, the top part, I think it was about maybe halfway down the uh, yoke. And <laughs> I continued on and I was almost to the point of separating for the sleeves when I decided to take it back to the um, neckband and start over. Now the reason I did this is the, um, the uh, beginning and end of round is center back. And often on a uh, top-down raglan, the beginning and end of round will often be either at one of the um, points of, of the raglan, um, and then it often shifts to the, one of the side seams, or you know what would be a side seam. And um, I realized that this one was going to be continuing down the... Um, center back and I was alternating uh, two skeins of the night bloom and I was getting um, a fairly to noticeable to me line running down the back of the sweater and I steamed it a little bit to see if it would kind of disappear with blocking and I just wasn't sure that it was and what I decided to do is to um, substitute that method of alternating skeins for um, doing helical knitting. So that is you come, you knit around, when you reach three stitches before where your next color is going to start, you slip three stitches and then you pick up the other strand of yarn, you knit around to three stitches before where you ended, slip those three stitches, knit around. Now I do have to improvise a little bit when I get to um, this sort of side seam area because of the way these stitches are knit. Um, but it's but it's working out. You can see a little bit at the top, or maybe you can. I don't know. I started it here and just with the way it was done with short rows and things I was changing yarns every two rows and there was a little bit of a noticeable um, or what I felt was noticeable changing when I first started. I do think that will block out and it is only for like this much and so the rest of it is very um, 
unnoticeable, very, very uh, seamless switch of yarns. I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but I'm very happy um, with how that helical method of um, changing yarns is working. I'm very happy with how the yarn's knitting up. There's a very good blend of, um, of the two skeins. So um, I uh, did try this on maybe an inch or two after I had separated for the sleeves. It fits very well. And I was debating the uh, way it's written, it's A-line shaping um, in the body after you separate for the um, sleeves and body and I was debating whether to do the A-line shaping or to um, do more traditional shaping where you narrow in at the waist and go out again for the hips. But I decided it's um, a, quite a light drapey sweater. It's um, going to have short sleeves. I decided, well, A, I think I only have enough yarn for short sleeves and B, I kind of like the way that looks. So I've decided I'm going to uh, go with the pattern and do A-line shaping and hope that I like it that way. <laughs> uh, time will tell. Uh, worst case scenario, I hate it. I rip it back and do traditional shaping. I'm hoping I don't have to do that. Um, so yeah, not much more to say about that other than it's more or less just stocking stitch, uh, except when you hit these shapes lines down um, sort of on the sides so I don't know if you can see let me see these lines kind of run down the side of the front and the back and um, that's the only place you kind of do something a little different and so it's very mindless uh, very addictive in a way or addicting to just I just found that's all I wanted to work on for uh, a few days on end um, which which there's nothing wrong with that but I thought it was I should probably put something with a little bit more interest in it because I do know I tend to get bored after a while and I needed something else to keep my interest so I proactively <laughs> cast on some other things so anyway there we go uh, that's walk along by Anka Street all right it's always the um dilemma is where to put things after i talk about them so um i think it was last week yes last week i had finished the ambient socks by helen stewart and um, that was the third pattern in the handmade sock society three collection um, I had two other patterns from that collection I hadn't yet knit, plus there was a, a fourth one coming out. So I knew I wanted to cast on um, one of those patterns for my next uh, pair of patterned socks. Um, and I had set yarn aside for uh, the first one, but I decided to go stash diving and look for yarns for the other two. And then I decided, why not just cast on all three and then I could knit on whichever one I felt like, whenever I felt like it. And so that's what I did. Um, kind of crazy. I hope I don't regret it. So far, it's working out great. So uh, let's start with sock number one, which is um, the Luminary Socks. And um, I don't know if you can tell, it's just a, basically a patterned front, a little bit of a lace work running down each side. The back is just plain stock in it. And so I had already set yarn um, aside for this pair. As soon as I got the pattern, I knew what yarn I wanted to use. Um, I'm gonna find, I have them all lined up in bags. I don't usually show my uh, project bags. This is one that I made, I think a couple of years ago. So I knew I wanted to use this kind of navy yarn. It's a little bit brighter on screen than it is in real life, but it's a really pretty navy. Uh, it's from Skein or Skein. 
I say skein. And the Top Draw Socks yarn, which is an 8515 Superwash Merino Nylon. And this is the um, Quill colorway. And um, it's very similar to what was used. I'm sure that's why it originally came to mind. And it is it has proved to be a really good choice. I really like how how the socks knitting up so far. Maybe I'll throw this on a sock blocker here. I am just at the point on this sock. I'm ready to uh, do the heel. So it's a really simple um, textured stitch pattern with this little bit of lace work running down each side. Twisted rib cuffs. And then, as I said, the back is just plain stockinette. So I love, love these. Um, so happy with how they are um, turning out so far. So that's sock number one. Um, okay, number two. Yeah, number two. This is, I don't remember where I got this bag, but I love the teacups on it. Um, I feel like that might have been part of a um, yarn and bag collection. I think maybe from Simply Socks Yarn Company, but don't quote me on that. I've had it quite a while. Um, anyway, these are the, uh, well, I've lost my, oh no, hang on, lost my paper clip, but it just transferred to another pattern here. Anyway, these are the Rainy Window Socks. Again, they feature a textured pattern um, running up the front of the leg and on the instep. They are plain knitting on the back and they have a little bit of a cable going down each side. So this is the second pattern in the um, Handmade Sock Society Collection 3. And for this I pulled out um, a skein I've had for quite a long time. It's from um, Hazel Knits. And this was one of their, um, every year they hold a sale with um, knotted skeins and also one of a kind colorways so this was a naughty naughty skein in a rogue one of a kind colorway this one was 367 um so it's this purpley color with some blue mixed in very tonal and i also really love how this one's knitting up so far um, again, I might as well throw it onto a sock blocker. So the textured pattern looks like little raindrops down the middle and then this weaving, twisting back and forth uh, cables on the side and then plain in the back. So again, really uh, super happy with this one too. I'm really happy with my yarn choice and how it uh, sort of captures the color of some dark gloomy clouds on a rainy day. Um, and also I just think it uh, shows off the pattern really well. It's not too busy. So speaking of potentially being too busy, uh, my original choice for um, for the third pattern, which is um, whoops, it's called Cirrus socks. They feature a kind of a slip stitch and eyelet lace pattern on the uh, leg, just a plain stockinette foot. My original choice for that was this uh, sock blank that I had bought at Knit City. I think it was the first year that I went. 
Um, it is from Iris Fiber Arts. This is the Fingering Sparkle. So it's a 75 Merino, 20 nylon, 5% Stellino. Anyway, um, <clears throat> pardon me. It looks like this. And I sort of thought it looked like a blue sky with sunshine and maybe some dark clouds thrown in there. That's how I thought of it. And I, I cast it on and I started, oops, that's the wrong end. Now you can see I'm knitting off of this end. I cast it on and I knit it for um, a few inches. And then I decided it was just, it was okay, but it was a little bit too busy. So I just took it back to the cuff and started knitting again just in plain stocking stitch. And even though it's bumpy because it's being knit with this crinkly uh, yarn, that will smooth out once it's blocked. That's just how sock blanks work. But I really do like how um, it's knitting up just as a plain sock. So that was a good choice to, um, to take it back. So I'm calling these my sunny day socks of the colors. Um, that's in a sock bag that I had made. So my second attempt <laughs> in his, this is one of the first sock bags I ever ever made. That was a few years ago. The cupcakes. Anyway, I started all over again in um, Oh, I don't have the label in here. Um, a, a skein, another skein from Fiber Nymph Dye Works. This is the bounce base in the um, denim colorway. And this was a much better choice because you can see it really does show off the pattern well. So I will again put that on a sock blocker. So yeah, it alternates this sort of stripe of offset uh, slipped stitches that you kind of you, you do a yarn over, or you knit two, and then you you kind of slip that stitch over the two stitches you've just knit, and then there's this like just a eyelet row that separates those. Again, twisted rib cuff. Um, I can tell you that by the time I had cast on all these socks, I was rather weary of twisted rib cuffs because <laughs> I did them all, plus the other socks I'm just about to show you, all within like a day or so. An even, over the course, I think, of an evening and the next day. I can't remember exactly. But yeah, I was a bit tired of twisted one by one rib by the end of it. Because, um, you know, the fun parts once you get to the uh, main part of the sock, right? Um, so there. So I've cast on all three pairs of the latest... Um, Handmade Sock Society collection. I finished one pair, cast on three others. Um, and I believe the label for that pair is hiding in this bag. Yes, this is my one I bought in um, Carnation, Washington. Um, is it, I think it's Tolt, yeah, Tolt Yarn and Wool. Bought that a couple of years ago. And I basically keep my plain vanilla socks in this bag along with some sock knitting paraphernalia so I always can grab that as I head out the door if I'm going anywhere in a longer car ride. So yeah, so this is actually the label for the last pair of socks. So I'm going to put it in this bag. And the reason um, that it was in this other bag is because I cast on um, these socks 
which are also a fiber nymph dye works and I bought this yarn and this yarn uh, it came as a set so I'll put them together in a second so you can see so this one is also fiber nymph dye works bounce in the um, chambray colorway and you can see it striped with this beige blue and gray with this kind of speckled stripe in between so what I plan to do um, here, I'll just cast on I'm actually doing um, as I often do with my striped vanilla socks I am doing uh, two at a time concurrently but on separate needles because I just can't do the two at a time on the same needle thing so there you go I've got about the same place with both of them so my intention is that I'm going to use um, this yarn that it kind of came with as a set I'm going to use as a um, complementary heel they're kind of made to go together so that ought to be interesting because um, if I reach the heel on here and I'm not finished the first stock I guess I'm gonna be taking yarn out of the center of this ball and try not to um, twist it with the other end that will be attached to my other sock so I didn't really think that through too much but I just I just feel like because they came together I really do need to use this um, as a heel for this one so I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do a um, short row heel or a um, traditional heel flap and gusset I'll I'll uh, make that decision when I get uh, closer and it might depend partly on where the stripes line up because um, I knit the legs different lengths depending which heel I'm doing so if blue kind of inserts better in one type or another that's how I'll decide so anyway I'm happy with that so so yes if you um, have lost count I have cast on five new pairs of socks since I saw you last. <laughs> like I said, I may regret it. I am really hoping I don't end up with um, second sock syndrome along the way. Um, but so far, I'm enjoying all of them and they all are, you know, different enough that uh, they will hopefully keep my interest um, as I move forward and that I won't get, um, you know, bored of one or another of them. None of them have, you know, stitches I don't like doing. The ones I find the most finicky are the cirrus socks with that stitch that you have to lift over the two you just knit. I just find, and it might just be the needles I'm using, I find that a little bit difficult kind of... Um, makes the uh, the point of the needle kind of presses into my uh, finger when I do it. So I can only work on those so long, but um, it's not like I dislike doing it or anything. So I think I'll be okay. So that's it for my knitting. I have been doing a fair bit of sewing this past week. I've been making more masks. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, it kind of came about um, on Mother's Day, when my sisters and I were having a Zoom call with my mom, she showed us uh, some masks that had been donated to their community, and she was, uh, somebody elected her to distribute them. She's, she does quite a lot in the community. And um, so she made a comment that she had phoned up, decided to uh, distribute them to the seniors. So she had sort of called people up to see if they wanted them and, and they, people were very enthusiastic to get them. And she just made a comment about, I could have given away like 10 more. So that got me thinking that maybe I could uh, sew some masks and send them up to her and she could distribute them. So I decided for myself um, to try out, oh, I'm trying to see where it got to. Um, it's on the floor. One second. 
I think I showed you a couple weeks ago that I had sewn some masks for uh, Cameron and uh, myself. And I wanted to try a different style because the ones I made right up quite high here and they were very warm. And um, uh, if I was wearing my glasses, they really fogged up. So I decided to try a different style. So I found a pattern for this type with the kind of louvers. And um, this was from a, a website called uh, sarahmaker.com. And um, it's designed so that you can um, insert, you can leave an opening and insert another layer in between if you want. But I just closed them up. But anyway, this one fits more like, like that. It's... Um, it's just two layers of fabric. It's a lot lighter. It's easier to kind of just stick on. Um, I can um, just throw it in my purse to have on hand. So I decided, and, and it made up way faster and more easily than the other masks that I had tried. So I, I called my mom and asked her um, if I were to make up some how, like how many sort of men versus women's sizes should I do? Um, I know most of the people, for instance, in the seniors group are women and and such. And she said, oh, you have phoned just at the right time. She said that they are um, looking at um, opening their church back up and they were going to have, um, everyone was going to have to have a mask and gloves on and do the social distancing. And they're, they have a little church, but they also have a very little congregation. I think there are 14 people that are in their congregation and about 10 will come regularly. So um, she said, we were talking about how we could get masks and who could sew them. And so would you mind sewing some for my, for the church? And I, you know, I said, no, not at all. She was just so thrilled. So I um, told her, just using scrap fabrics, whatever elastic I have. And so um, I did have made up quite a, a number of them. I decided the guys probably just want something plain. And I had a lot of this cotton left over from um, a quilt that I had made. So all the guys get boring beige. But uh, the women sizes, um, the fabrics are a little bit, a little bit more interesting. Oh, I do have a plain blue one. I originally made this one for Cameron, but um, the elastic wasn't long enough, so um, none of that. Um, so. Yeah, I've been busy with those. I've also, um, I have some more that I have uh, cut out and started. Um, and I am making, um, some of these are reserved for some members of my family, uh, grandkids and kids. Um, and then whatever I have left and however much elastic I have, I will make the rest and, um, send the rest up to my mom. I think right here I actually have more than she actually needs as it is. So I just told her, um, whatever is left over, distribute as you see fit. So these make up really quickly, um, won't take me long. I was gonna sew today and then ended up, uh, my day went a little bit differently than planned. So that's what I'm gonna do tomorrow, is finish these up so I can get those up to her. Um, yeah, so that's what else I've been doing this week. Um, it's amazing actually just how quickly those go together. Um, kind of been doing like an assembly line. And then I had, um, you can see, I've used um, black elastic on some just because that's what I had. So all the dark ones, I just used the black elastic. So that was a good use of that too. Um, yeah, so that's it for sewing and knitting. So let's talk a little bit about what's been going on around here. 
past week and a half. Uh, so last weekend, not the one that just passed, but the one before was Victoria Day weekend here in Canada. So Monday was the stat holiday. Um, uh, Friday was my son-in-law's birthday and so um, we went over to uh, my daughter's house and had like a family barbecue. So she had arranged for some people to go by the house and honk the horn, say happy birthday. And then um, we got there a little bit later because uh, Cameron, when he got, he got off work a little bit later. So by the time we headed over to their place, they were still out on the driveway, but that part had kind of ended. So we all moved into the backyard and um, lots of space to spread out and we all took our own food, took turns at the barbecue, cooking and and such. So um, we're able to be together, but still maintain our social distancing. And uh, she had designated her downstairs bathroom for um, just for uh, guests and had wipes there. So we'd go and use the bathroom, wipe everything down, made a real, you know, made everything made it so it was all safe. Um, so that was really a nice evening. And then um, we just had a quiet rest of the weekend. Weather was kind of mixed. So um, it's, we didn't really, normally we would have gone to the cabin and uh, did miss doing that. But at the same time, the weather wasn't that great. So in that sense, it wasn't so bad. Um, I know I mentioned last week that uh, British Columbia was relaxing restrictions as of um, last Tuesday after the holiday weekend and I was concerned about how many people would relax before that. We quite often on a on a long weekend on the Sunday afternoon we'll see the traffic slow right down on the freeway that we can see from our backyard here and um, I was concerned that a lot of people wouldn't heed the um, non-essential travel ban etc. Um, as it was um, we never did see a huge uh, uh, traffic jam or anything on the freeway. So it sounds like a lot of people did stay home. Um, certainly the not so great weather probably helped in that regard. Um, I do know some people went away, including like one of our neighbors and some other people we know, but I think less people than normal did that. So, um, so I was happy to see that. Um, so yeah, so Tuesday did signal the um, opening up of some businesses that had been closed and um, sort of the beginning of us being allowed to um, enlarge our bubbles a little bit. Um, and so that's been now just, uh, well, it's been a week today and I think we're all, well, I know people I talk to, we're all kind of holding our collective breath to see how the numbers go over the next couple of weeks to see if people have relaxed too much. Um, I had been putting off getting bedding plants for the garden until it was officially allowed. Even though the garden centers had been open, I've really been limiting, we have been limiting ourselves to sort of um, largely essential uh, purchases. And so, um, Monday, or Tuesday, I was really excited to head out to the garden store and pick up bedding plants. And so um, I had to wait outside for a little while and uh, they had it set up really well with um, people outside in a lineup, social distancing, they wiped off the cart if you needed it, um, monitored how many people could go in the store at a time, had sort of um, pathways marked out to travel on and um, at checkout markers, where to stand as you're checking out, things like that. Uh, plexiglass at the cashier stations, uh, wiping off the uh, point of sale 
uh, machines, all those things. Um, I was really, really impressed. Um, felt completely safe. People were really good about keeping their distance. Um, so it was a really positive first venture out into sort of the new normal for me. Other than grocery shopping, I don't know that I've been in another store since all of this started. Oh, I guess we went in the hardware store once. Um, so yeah, I kind of texted a picture to my mom and sisters of my trunk full of happiness, as I called it, all the bright uh, plants in the trunk of my car. And so I spent the rest of that day out in the garden getting things in. I knew it was supposed to not be very nice the next day. And so I wanted to get everything in uh, that day and did manage. It was a, it was a, a long afternoon. I was really tired by the time I was done. Um, I was gonna uh, have my have a gin and tonic when I was all finished and I was so uh, tired that I was halfway through my drink before I realized I'd forgotten to put the gin in. <laughs> so <laughs> that explain that that just says it right there. Um, so yeah I was stiff and sore and tired but really happy to get all the plants in and it's been a great week since then because we've had a real mix of weather it's been it's never been really hot we've had uh, regular rain showers so i haven't had to really water things out in the garden um, i did do a little bit in the backyard but uh, could have gotten away without it um, and it's just it's been great it's given the plants a really good week to get established and everything's still looking it's all standing up how it's supposed to. Things are starting to bloom. Uh, it's got a long ways to go because a lot of plants I bought didn't have flowers on them yet, especially for my, I did some pots and they are all pretty colorless other than green at the moment, but it's the promise that, that uh, I love. Can't wait till everything starts to fill out and bloom and stuff. So that, that felt great to get that done. Um, but honestly, with this opening up, we're really not doing um, much, if anything, really differently. Um, we're still sticking pretty close to home. Uh, other Cameron works, so he is at working outside the home. But we're not going crazy shopping or anything. Um, uh, just got groceries this past weekend and he stopped at the hardware store the other day to pick something up but um, uh, mainly we're just just carrying on as usual uh, one thing we did do which was um, it was really just really great was uh, Jessica phoned up on Saturday and she'd been out taking lunch to her husband at work and she had the kids with her and she said um, uh, have the kids we all have masks can we come over and hug you guys <laughs> we're like yes yes you can so we all put our masks on had a hug and then proceeded to visit outside with lots of distance because we're just not uh, there's too many of the adults are working with the public because we already have big bubbles as it is so we're just for the most part going to carry on with our social distancing when we're together but we'll take those brief moments cover our faces be able to hug each other um, that was just such a great feeling you realize how much you miss that physical contact when you don't have it so i've this week i have hugged all of my kids and all of my grandkids and um, it has felt wonderful um actually on uh, yesterday uh, my son uh, had yesterday which is Memorial Day in the US he had that off instead of last Monday um, Victoria Day because uh, the company he works for and the job he's doing they do a lot of work with the US so he worked last week last Monday instead and had yesterday off so he came over for lunch and it happened to be pouring rain normally we've always been doing all our visiting outside um, but, uh, so that was the first time since mid-March that we've actually had somebody else 
like in our house besides us. Again, lots of distance, made him some lunch, washed hands like a million times and served him and everything and just, again, just keeping things as safe as we can. Um, and then my sister dropped by last night. She had to pick something up. I had made her a mask and um, she hadn't picked it up yet. So she came by last night. So we had a little, you know, chat at the front door. And then my older sister came by uh, this morning to drop something off and we went out to the backyard and had a visit then. So no hugs with them. We'll keep them We'll keep that separate for now, but uh, still good to see them face to face because it's been a couple of months plus since we've, I've seen um, either of them. So that felt good too, just to, to have a visit this morning uh, with my sister. We were sitting out front. I think I got a little bit of sun. Probably won't see it in this light, plus I have some makeup on, but I think I got a little bit of a sunburn I can feel it here nothing like major or anything I don't know how much you can see maybe yeah you might be able to see a line here um, nothing thankfully too bad I have to be careful I have fair skin so I really do try not to spend much time in the sun but um, we we're out there it was cloudy to start with nice breeze going so it never got really hot feeling um, then we and we visited a whole lot longer than I expected. When I came inside, it was 1:30. I we'd been out there for um, probably two hours, and I hadn't realized that we'd even been visiting that long. So yeah, I kind of on the spur of the moment, I decided, why don't I record while the sun is shining? And it didn't take me too long to get things together. Plus, I had a pretty decent hair day. You gotta strike while the iron's are hot. Um, I have a little clip in for the first time. I have a little curl that when it gets a certain length, it curls right around and pokes me in the eye. Um, so that I've clipped back. Um, still with the haircuts, not sure. You know, on one hand, um, We've been, Cameron and I have been going to the same place for years and years and years and had the same woman cut our hair forever. And so I definitely trust her. Um, our province's health officer was saying in one of her um, briefings uh, this week that she had gotten her hair cut and she said, I wore a mask and my hairdresser wore a mask and it all was fine and I thought well if she's uh, okay with it I should be okay with it too but I'm still not a hundred percent comfortable so I am just going to um, carry on and just watch the numbers um, because time will tell we've been so fortunate here in British Columbia to be able to flatten our curve never got out of hand um, the vast majority of our cases have been uh, outbreaks in specific locations uh, like the rest of the world. Um, a lot of them, unfortunately, in seniors facilities. We've had several food processing plants and a couple of, um, well, several, I should say, um, correctional facilities. There is some community transfer that's unavoidable, but uh, never has it hasn't gotten away from us yet and I'm sincerely hoping that it doesn't uh, so yeah I think it's I'm just gonna wait and see so we'll we'll just carry on sort of carrying on doing what we're doing for the time being um, next Thursday is um, our older son's birthday and his fiance called and asked she wants to do something. They just live in a little uh, townhouse. So she was wanting to do like a family barbecue and um, deciding, trying be between our house or um, our daughter's. So I said, yep, we'll do it here. And again, we'll sort of uh, do, do what we've been doing, bring our own food, sitting far apart, taking turns at the barbecue. I'll again, like, like Jessica did, reserve one bathroom for company, provide, uh, wipes that people can clean every, you know, after they use it and just do the very best we can to um, 
prevent any transmission should anyone be sick and not know it. Um, as I mentioned, I've been dealing with seasonal allergies. I, you know, I always say I have a bit of a runny nose, like always. I always have a Kleenex handy. Uh, but this year, for the past two months, I've noticed often on various symptoms and you know, particularly right now, I'm so hyper aware of every little sniffle or cough or whatever. This uh, last week seems to be a little bit worse, uh, and I think it's probably with the cottonwood fluff that's uh, blowing around at the moment. Um, I did, for the first time, um, get some allergy medicine and I'm taking that every day and it does seem to be helping if not completely eliminating everything it definitely has improved it so um, hopefully that will will pass it's, I notice it in my throat it's a little bit sore and maybe a little bit raspy sounding not sure but yeah, hopefully that will all pass um, anyone I talk to seems to be having a uh, worse than usual allergy season so maybe it's just the way things are i've noticed over the last few years i'm definitely more sensitive to things when we had the wildfires a few years ago and a lot of smoke down here i really noticed it so i just think as i'm getting older my whole um, reaction to things like that seems to be worse than that it used to be um Anyway, that's probably more than you ever really wanted to know about that. Um, I think that is it for now. Nothing thrilling coming up this weekend. Cameron is in a um, golf tournament on Sunday um, that the curling club is uh, putting on. Um, I decided not to go in it this year. Um, instead of everyone arriving at once and doing a shotgun start, which is pretty typical of this sort of thing. They are staggering all the tee offs. So, um, and they're discouraging gathering together in the parking lot uh, before or after golf. So once things are more back to normal, they'll host um, a dinner or lunch or something and give out prizes and things. But for now, it's just a chance to get together in small groups and get out for some golf. Originally the weather wasn't supposed to be great. It looks like it's improving now. So I know that he will enjoy getting out on the course with his um, curling team. So um, yeah, I think that is it for this week. I uh, plan <laughs> to um, record again probably next Tuesday or Wednesday as I say try and bump up the recording schedule earlier in the week um, yeah and if you don't don't see me don't worry I'm sure I'll be fine <laughs> um, so yeah uh, just everyone I hope you are well I mostly see uh, Canadian and US news so I'm not sure about the rest of the world and just quite how much uh, things are opening up in other countries uh, but I do know in the US and Canada there is an opening up of things to um, some extent in um, most places so um, take it slow okay <laughs> please stay stay uh, cautious stay healthy um, it will never it will it's not going to be normal for a long time but let's not rush to um get too close to normal i i really do think the way to beat this is to uh go slow and steady so please please use caution out there uh stay well enjoy your uh crafting whatever you might be up to these days and um I will see you again uh, in a week's time. Bye for now.